Hello, I'm Dr. Ron Eaglin, and I'm coming to here to talk about SMATA, or SMATA Online. SMATA stands for Stormwater Management, and uh, Stormwater Management and Design Tool that we have here. SMATA Online is a cloud program, and what this means to you is that you can get to SMATA anywhere on the internet. So as long as you have a browser, you can get to SMATA. Another way that you can get to SMATA is if you're a BMP Trains model user, at the bottom of the BMP Trains model, you'll see a link to SMATA. Now, SMATA is designed to be able to use with or without an account on SMATA. So in other words, if you want to just come in and use SMATA, do a bunch of quick calculations, and get a set of results, you don't have to create an account. You can just come in and do it. However, if you want to save information for later use and maybe have data that you use over and over again, you have the capability of creating an account and being able to use SMATA that way. I am going to go ahead and use an account because I'm going to save some information in SMATA. Very easy to log in, and if you have a Google login, it will let you use your Google login to get into it. It does not keep any of the information about Google, it just simply uses it to authenticate you within the SMATA system. So once you get into SMATA, uh, you're going to see a number of nice menus. Well, the beauty of SMATA, since it is free and available, and it constantly is upgrading and getting better, the beauty of this is, is that you can do a lot of things with it very quickly. So let's do, some, let's do some hydrology here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go into the hydro routine, and I'm going to generate a hydrograph. So there's a few steps involved with generating a hydrograph, creating a watershed, creating a rainfall, and then putting together them together as a hydrograph. So let's step through each of these relative, relatively easily. Well, if you click on watershed, it's going to take you to a menu that shows you some watersheds. And here's where you can look at some of the features of SMATA. What you can see here is I have a section called Your Data and a section called Global Items. You can create something, a watershed in this case, save it in SMATA, and it'll be available to you for as long as you're using the program. You also have the ability to make that watershed available to anybody else who logs into SMATA by creating it by saying basically make global. And that watershed that you've created will now be available to anybody else who uses SMATA. Do realize that the global items are flushed on a regular basis as they get to be a lot of them. However, if I wanted to create a watershed and then say to my colleague, just use that watershed I created, it's the one that you want to use, it's got all the correct parameters, you can do that and they'll have access to it. Well, let's look at this watershed. I'm just going to simply click the sample 10 acre watershed that I've created before. I'm going to click edit and I'm going to look at that watershed here. So what you see in this is a number of input parameters. The most important of these input parameters, because I've saved it, is the watershed name. In other words, that's going to let me know this watershed is this watershed. There's a whole bunch of other parameters that you have here that you can get through the documentation that take you through how does area work, how does impervious area work, what is directly connected impervious area, what is additional abstraction, what's the curve number method, that's actually all in the SMATA documentation, which is available also freely available online. Over to the right hand side of the screen, you actually see the values in a tabular format. Suppose you want to print these. The table view takes you directly to a table view of the format, and the XML view will actually make it an exportable set of data here. So I have this watershed. And now I'm going to jump back to the main menu and take you through step by step to the, through the other pieces. Back to the main menu, or the secondary menu, and now to the next menu that I'm going to go to, which is Rainfall. Again, the Rainfall screen looks a lot like the Watershed screen, only difference being that I now have a Rainfall. Well, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and create a new Rainfall and take you through that, those sets of steps. So if I create a new rainfall, I do have parameters that I need to enter, such as a time step. Well, I'm going to call my rainfall a 24-hour type 1. And I'm going to have a time step of about 20 minutes in this case, because I know that I'm, how many steps I want to actually have. And in 24 hours, that's going to be three steps per hour. So I, I, I'm going to get a pretty nice looking plot here. It's going to be a 24-hour rainfall. Note that when you're doing 
um, off of dimensionless curves. The curves are truly dimensionless in both time and volume so that you could actually take a 24-hour rainfall curve and crunch it into, let's say, a 12-hour duration. One thing that's very important is that you give it a total depth of rainfall. I'll just say 11 inches in this case. I want to use a dimensionless curve. And when I say I want to use a dimensionless curve, I have to select one. I said it was going to be a type 1, so I select a type 1. And now it has created a rainfall. I have the ability to now take this rainfall and save it. And that's going to be useful to me because I want to use it in the hydrograph. If I go back here and edit it, I will see that that rainfall is right there all those values. Okay, it's in a tabular format in this page. Don't worry. You can go ahead and edit that at any time by clicking edit and it takes you back into the edit screen. So let's go to the next step which is now taking these two and creating a hydrograph. So I'm just going to simply click on the hydrograph from there because I have an ability to jump quickly to the hydrograph generation and I am going to create a new hydrograph. So in this case, I'm not going to save the hydrograph, and if I'm not going to save it, there's no requirement to enter a name there. I created my sample 10 acre watershed, and I created my 24 hour type 1 rainfall, and I'm going to use a common hydrograph method, SES 256. I'm going to say calculate, and my end result here is the hydrograph that you see generated over on the right of the screen. Okay. I can also click the plot button and pull up a plot of that hydrograph would be something that you would com commonly want to do. But you, as you can see, within just a few minutes, I was able to create a watershed, a rainfall from a dimensionless curve, and a hydrograph, and generate a plot. Suppose you want to get a nice report from this hydrograph. If I go to the report view here of the hydrograph, I'm going to get all those values in a tabular format that's easy for printing, and the plot at the bottom, which will also print as part of that report. So that was generating a hydrograph. Let's do a few other fun things that you can do with Smata Online. Let's go back to the main menu here. And I've got a number of calculators here. So let's just do a simple circular pipe calculation. So I'm going to create a new circular channel. Now, if you wanted to save this information, you have the ability to save it, because that Save button is there. And it would have shown up in the previous screen as a saved one. We are going to make, let's say, a 24-inch diameter pipe with a Manning Zen of 0.02 a slope of 0.01, and let's say a flow of um, 8 CFS. And I want to calculate the depth of flow here. I simply click Calculate Depth, and it's going to go through, and it's going to calculate that depth of flow. Whether it's, if it's surcharged, that depth of flow will be equal to the diameter. So it, you can actually see what happens in surcharge conditions here. It's really that simple. You have the ability to enter parameters and click either Calculate Flow or Calculate Depth and if I wanted to save it, I could save it at this point. But we're just going to click Done and go back to the, to the menu system again. What about time of concentration? Now, calculators, I have a number of calculators in here. And I do actually add calculators on a regular basis based on needs to calculate things. One of my favorites is the time of concentration calculator. Let's go to it and create a new time of concentration calculation. Um, if you scroll down in the Calculate Time of Concentration Calculator, it gives you some information about each of the equations that you're using right there on that screen. However, if you do want detailed information about, let's say, the retardance coefficients or the different types of uh, parameters of those calculations, you can go to the documentation, which is also online, or go to the hydrology text to get that. So if I were to enter some parameters here, such as a slope of the watershed, a length of flow, an area, a rational coefficient, a retardance coefficient, and let's say a rainfall intensity. I'm not going to enter everything here. I'll say rainfall intensity of 3 and a curved number of, let's say, 75. And I hit Calculate. What it will do is generate a report on the right side using every one of those equations which you've entered parameters allowing it to do a calculation. So using each equation, such as the FAA calculation, if you look at the FAA calculation, which gives you the time of concentration, which is shown on the screen right now, that will give you 10.18 because you've entered the parameters necessary to do that calculation. If you do not enter a parameter, then the value that's going to be output will be zero because it doesn't have everything it needs to do it. But it does, is able to give you a quick and easy 
calculation of the time of concentration using every single one of the equations that we have documented within the program. Well, you know what? Let's do some statistics. So I go back here, I'm going to enter again, and I'm going to look at stats. I have two statistics routines within SMATA. One, of, one is regression analysis, and the other one is distribution analysis. You know what? I'm going to do a distribution analysis here. And I have a number of global distributions that are available. This will be look different every single time that you look at the program because, well, different people are using at it, using the program, and these do get flushed on a regular basis. Remember, there's no guarantee that, per, that anything that you make global will be there longer than about two weeks. I typically flush the data on about a two-week basis. Well, I'm going to create a new distribution here. And to do this, it's really easy. I, however, I'm going to go to a spreadsheet that I have here because I have my data in a spreadsheet. I have a set of distribution data that I want to use. I'm going to copy. I'm going to paste it into this data entry screen. And this is very easy to enter data into SMATA. You simply enter the data in this text box, one piece of data per line. And there's your data. Remember, this is distribution data, so it's univariate data. If you're doing regression data, which means you have an x and a y, you do one entry per line with the space between your x and your y. It really is that easy. So let's say we want to calculate this and um, look at how it fits a GEV, or Generalized Extreme Value Distribution. I hit the Calculate button, and I have the final results that are the GEV. Of course, this just looks like a bunch of numbers on a spreadsheet. However, you can look at a plot of this and see how well your GEV fits the data that you've put there. So, also when you're doing a distribution analysis, you might want to know what type of predictive values you're going to get for different types of return periods. In the edit screen, you saw that there were these abilities to enter return periods into this text box here, and they were used in the calculations to give you back the predictive analysis of what prediction you would get for that return period, which also corresponds with an exceedance probability, and there's your prediction. So, SMOT is capable of doing a lot of things and doing them relatively quickly, and it is designed to be easy to use for individual users and freely available and online all the time. SMATA is a service of the Stormwater Management Academy, Florida Department of Transportation, and University of Central Florida. Thank you very much, and we really do hope that you enjoy using SMATA online.